गुड इवनिंग यूनियन मिनिस्टर मिस्टर राजीव प्रताप रूडी मिस्टर नवीन जिंडल चैंसलर सीपी जिंडल ग्लोबल यूनिवर्सिटी डॉक्टर राजकुमार वाइस चैंसलर ओपी जिंडल यूनिवर्सिटी प्रोफेसर स्टेफन पे मार्क्स professor of health and human rights harvard university <coughs> professor jeffrey lemon vice chancellor new york university shanghai china mr phil betty editor times education world university rankings vice chancellors chancellors presidents of the universities distinguished participants ladies and gentlemen i am indeed happy to have this opportunity to address this delegate of the times higher education brics and emerging economies University Summit 2015 I welcome the very distinguished participants of this summit to this hall which has witnessed momentous changes in the contemporary history this high dome mighty columns witness the end of 190 years colonial rule in india and just after 3 years of that event again witness the emergence of a new republic which is now the largest functional parliamentary democratic republic in the world I am glad that you have accepted our invitation and responded to have the formal inauguration session at this <coughs> Darbar Hall of Rashtrapati Bhavan. I congratulate the Times Higher Education and their partner in India, O.P. Jindal Global University. for taking the initiative to organize this summit on the important issue why emerging economies need world class university i am happy that representatives from countries in brics region and many emerging as well as developed economies have gathered in this summit to deliver it the challenges facing the higher education sector and on the importance of global benchmarking of educational institutions excellencies ladies and gentlemen india has one of the world's largest higher educational system comprising 712 universities and over 36000 colleges the expansion of higher education network in india has enabled us to create access to higher education <coughs> across, <coughs> across the country however the quality of education in our institutions of higher learning remain a big challenge however there was a time when india in the field of higher education played a dominant role for almost 1500 years from 3rd century bc to 12th century ad 
from the days of Takshashila, which witnessed the confluence of four great civilizations, Indian, Persian, Greek and Chinese, to Nalanda, which attracted brilliant minds in the form of teachers and students, like magnet, to these institutions, not one or two, but many. But after that, unfortunately, we have not been able to find the place commensurate to our size, culture, civilization, population in the world ranking of the universities. Being visitor of nearly 114 central institutions in the capacity of the President of the Republic, almost like parrot from 2012, I used to emphasize on this aspect, how to improve the quality and standard of the higher institutions in India. Mr. Novin Jindal has quoted a few lines from one of my observations that I refuse to believe that having 15 IITs, 30 NITs, more than 700 universities, not a single one can up to the, come up to the standard required for the world benchmarking. I am happy that finally, in the third year of my presidency, I had the privilege of witnessing that two Indian institutions have been ranked amongst the top 200 universities in the world. One of the institutions <laughs> is the top 100 institutions in the engineering and technology category. It is my firm belief that there are many higher educational institutions in India that have the potential to become one of the best in the world. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the quality of education has a direct correlation with inclusive growth and development. Emerging economies facing the challenges of meeting the developmental aspirations of their citizens must build on educational system comparable to the best in the world. A serious discourse on how to address the quality concerns in higher education should therefore begin at the earliest. The higher education sector in India must align itself with the global education sector. The first university commission of independent India, popularly known as the Radha Krishnan Commission, after the name of Sir Sarvapalli Radha Krishnan, who happened to be the second president of the Republic, this commission, as early as in 1948, pointed out that universities need to have the world-mindedness and national sentiments together. In the recent times, 
there has been a growing interest in the world class universities among scholars institutional administrators and policy makers a world class university in two days time is one that can address the global problems of society having the entire world as its constituency most benchmarking agencies give considerable weightage to research output and international outlook of an educational institution to meet benchmarks institutions need to provide greater emphasis on quality research that is recognized globally this would help in their efforts to become world class what is needed further is for such aspiring universities to reach out communicate exchange and encourage mobility of persons and ideas across the globe adopting a world view would help an institution getting accepted by the global community of higher education it will also add to its academic repute a parameter considered by many global benchmarking and rating agencies times higher education in particular over and above a focused attention on cutting edge research and an international orientation world class universities must possess other enviable features some of them to my mind are high quality faculty meritorious students and encouraging teaching and learning environment a high level of resource availability sound infrastructure and existence of considerable autonomy and robust governance structures presence of these elements in an institution would automatically reflect a higher international ranking having said that the parameters of global rankings many a times do not reflect the ground realities and socio political conditions prevalent in various countries many countries have therefore adopted their own ranking mechanism with parameters more suited to the domestic setting in the case of india a national institutional ranking framework has been developed recently to evaluate educational institutions national assessment and accreditation council also operate in familiar territory assessing and accrediting institutions of higher education in our country i believe these national counterparts of the international ranking system will only reinforce and concretize the push towards accountability and quality in educational institutions at the same time they will inspire better performance of institutions leading to important international ranking excellencies distinguished participants ladies and gentlemen the five brics economies represent over 3 billion people which is 42% of the world population 
they have a combined GDP of over 16 trillion US dollar with a world share of 20% and foreign exchange reserves of over 4 trillion US dollars. In this context, the Times Higher Education BRICS and Emerging Economies Universities Ranking is an acknowledgement of the potential which exists in the higher education sector in these five countries. Excellencies, distinguished participants, in today's era of globalization, which rests on the pillars of collaboration, cooperation, and communication, there are ample opportunities to use these three Cs to create many world-class universities. The combined strength of the five BRICS nation can develop an educational ecosystem for their citizens as well as for the world citizens. I hope this summit will come out with innovative solutions with the cooperation of the private sector for the emerging economies to further strengthen their higher educational system and in the process emerge as leaders. Distinguished delegates, excellencies, and ladies and gentlemen, I once again compliment the Times Higher Education and O.P. Jindal Global University for taking this initiative and hosting the summit to facilitate a greater understanding of the challenges of the higher education sector by all stakeholders. I am confident that this conclave will bring out new ideas and thoughts that are important for policymakers, educationists, to build world-class universities in the developing world. I wish all the participants and delegates of this summit a very successful outcome of their endeavor. I welcome the guests from outside India and I wish them not only a very productive and fruitful outcome of the summit, but their comfortable and useful stay amidst us. Thank you, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Jai Hind.